Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here, and today I thought I would chat with you guys a little bit about my 100 chin-up a day experiment I've been doing. And this is one of these things that I think I'm going to keep up long term. Uh, but I had a lot of questions about it. I had people ask questions, they've made comments, things like that, and they don't understand I'm not the first person to come up with this. I have historically promoted for you guys and told you that Pavel Tauseline's Breaching the Groove works really well. But what I had come to realize is that you could take it to a pretty far extreme, and I've heard of different people doing it in the past, and I had started doing this myself a few weeks back, and then when I had mentioned I was doing it, some people pointed out that, hey, Jamie Lewis has been doing this to a larger extreme, and when I looked at what he did, I realized, well, if Jamie's doing it, then it probably is possible. It's possible to recover from this, and when I started messing with it, uh, one of the things that people ask me is, hey, aren't you going to get tendonitis? Are you having overuse issues? Are you having this problem, that problem? And the reality is I've found that it's quite the opposite. Now, I, when I do heavy chin-ups, have had problems with tendonitis and my bicep tendons and things like that. But one of the things that I have noticed is that there's a difference between getting really, really good at finding your groove on exercises like this when you're doing high volumes of it versus trying to go really heavy for maximum tension and work. There's an enormous difference here. Enormous difference. Uh, because when you're going heavy, sometimes as you get towards those limit sets, whether it's a five rep max, an eight rep max, when it starts to get heavy and it starts to get difficult, you start to try to get yourself up any way that you can, right? And it's just about leverage. It's about using as much muscle as you can to pull yourself up. When you're doing it, for sub-maximal, and I mean sub-maximal reps for volume, what I find is that if you keep the, the reps relatively low, meaning the same way Pavel Tauselin used to recommend you do it, that you don't go over half of your rep max, okay? For me, depending upon how I feel, I can usually do 12 to 15 chin-ups while weighing 220. I can just step up and knock out 12 to 15. I can probably push about 15 if I really take it pretty far. Uh, but I can do five with no problems. And what I find is that as I get further and further into it, because early on when I started doing it, I did notice there's a little bit of tendonitis can be in the shoulder. You can pull things a funny way. Same thing in the, the tendons and the biceps. What I start finding is that when you learn to grip it all the way under, so again, the same way guys like Athlean X teach, right? To where you do this, you get all the way under and grip it like this, not over it takes a lot of the stress off the forearm down here and it takes some of the stress off the bicep tendon that tends to insert there. A lot of that inflammation goes away. What you also start finding is that, because a lot of times I would just do them a variety of ways. Some of them go all the way down, some of them not. As I got further and further into it, I learned how to extend at the bottom to a way to where my, my shoulders do go all the way up. I do pull my lats apart. And when I get to that point, I found that I actually have good rotation of everything and I, you start finding your groove that makes the stuff not hurt. So what ends up happening once you get feel a little bit of inflammation in areas, you start to learn when you start doing dozens and dozens of them every day, that you start to find the angles and how to rotate everything through the reps from the bottom to the top with practice, practice, practice instead of straining because you're not ever doing a difficult set. And that's the point that needs to be made, except maybe the last set or two of the day. Sometimes I'll go ahead and take them out so that I get a good training response from that. But what you start finding is that you learn to get really efficient at finding the angles that even if you are getting a little inflammation that's starting, of where it doesn't irritate it. And if it doesn't irritate it during the reps, because when you just find sometimes just an inch difference in the elbow position at different points, like in my case, I get all the way under, I get gripped completely under like this, not, not this. And I have the elbows flared a bit at the top, you know, as I'm coming up. But then when I get down, I let the elbows rotate all the way forward before I pull myself back up from the very bottom. And what I found when I find these different grooves like that, the tendonitis completely stops. You don't get any issues. Your shoulders feel fine. Your tendons down here feel fine, and you can do large volumes of it. And by that same token, if I just stop at fives for the first, I don't know, 18 to 20 sets every day, I don't have any problems because you're able to maintain good technique. And you guys have watched me do it lately in my, um, my Metcon stuff because the last couple Metcon workouts, I've done 35 chins as part of the metabolic conditioning circuit. 
and that's done just in a rotation without turning the camera off. And if they're a couple minutes apart, right, two minutes apart, you fully recovered because it's submaximal. Like I could do that all day. So what I find for myself is that I can even do them in bursts. So uh, people have asked that also. They're like, hey, uh, what about someone who has a busy life? Well, why can't you do 70 of your chin-ups in the evening? I do it all the time. Because, yes, I do them in the morning sometimes, but on my lifting days, I don't want to do chin-ups before I, I squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, any of that stuff. And a lot of times I'm doing that stuff until later. So if that's the case, I don't even touch a chin-up till in the afternoon. Right? It's done after my other training. So what you find is that if you do large volumes of them, you can find the angles and everything that doesn't cause the tendonitis because you start to learn your grooves and you get a feeling for it, an assessment for it. And if you space them out, like in my case, I can do 20 sets of five without any real fatigue. Yes, there's going to be some fatigue generated, but it's not really a big deal. And so for me, that's usually my goal, and I just keep a count. At first, I used to use a spreadsheet to just keep a count. Uh, eventually I go into my head and now I've gotten to where I just know throughout the day you just count and if you just remember how many sets you've done of five if you, I just keep it at five it's easy I just remember that I'm on my 18th set for the day right and when I know that I get to 20 sets that's my goal when I get to 20 sets of five that's my goal for the day and then sometimes I'll go a little bit over and I have been lately I might crank out three more on the last set or I might do for sets 19, 20, and then maybe 21, come and do another one, I'll do six. Or I'll crank out seven to eight on the 21st one, so I end up getting something in the range of 110. Because then it gets hard because you've done all these others in the day, and then you do eight. You do eight of them after you've done 100 through the day, and it does become close to a limit set, right? You're getting a good training effect there. But... If you do them in the evening sometimes, let's say I'm just chilling. I'm done with all my work for the day. I'm done with my clients, my videos, my training. And I might put on a show or a movie to watch. And while I'm watching that movie and chilling, I go over to my chin-up bar, I don't know, every five minutes and do five chins. All right. It's very easy to get 100 chin-ups inside of a two-hour movie. I can get 100 chin-ups inside of a two-hour movie. Now, granted, I'm stronger than a lot of people. Yes, I've got a big back, but I also weigh a lot more. So someone who weighs less, proportionately speaking, that's probably going to be just as easy. If you're capable of doing 10 chin-ups or 12 chin-ups, you're going to have no trouble doing a five-rep set every five minutes just while you're in the middle of other stuff. Uh, you can hit, all right, let me say this again, you can hit 100 chin-ups relatively easy doing that if you have built up to it over several weeks or months. So it really is easy to build up to, and the tendonitis really isn't there. And then I would say to a lot of people out there, think about what this brings to the table. Doing something like this outside of your normal training time gives you a lot of focus on your other stuff. In my case, because for, for my general strength, I have to have a lot of upper and mid-back work. Guys, yeah, I'm just going to keep filming. There's, I've never had times a day to where there's not noise. This is actually 5 in the morning, and it's beeping outside. 5 a.m., they're already starting. So the point I'm making, though, is that we can do all of this work and recover from it because it's submaximal, because you learn to find your grooves that don't cause the issue. But then you look at what all it brings to the table. It's all your back work. Like we, Since I've started doing this, I don't need to do any of my rowing. I don't need to do any face pulls. I don't need to do any of these things. They're irrelevant. All of my back work that's not deadlifting or a hip hinge of some type is covered because I'm doing an enormous amount of it. People would say, well, could you should you be doing bicep curls? I don't know. I think my biceps are growing, and I don't do any of that. I don't need it. People say, well, what about doing the high rep band stuff for tendonitis or whatever for elbows i don't need it because even like guys like ripto has said that doing high volume chins every day cured his tendonitis and it's because again the way that you do that it's not like you're coming in and doing 10 sets of 10 to failure it's not the same thing it tends to just keep that area worked and you build connective tissue and the inflammation stays pretty low in my experience thus, thus far if you do it correctly uh, then you think about all the other stuff it brings, all these guys who are chasing aesthetics. If you guys want to get aesthetic as far as that goes, this guy's talking about golden era bodybuilders. Those guys lived and died on things like chins and overhead press. So if you think about the muscles involved, yeah, it's an exercise that's going to enhance what you guys are looking for. Look at what gets worked. Then we think about for all the other strength purposes, think about how many supplemental lifts this fills in. Look how much grip work you do doing 100 chins every day. If you do that every single day, 
you're getting grip training. Okay, that is part of your grip training. The abdominal training, you're getting crunches every day. This is the equivalent of doing modest amounts of ab and grip work every single day. In addition to handling all of your lat training, your rear delt training, all of this stuff. It's all covered. It lets you focus on all your other endeavors while building a large amount of work capacity. And no, it doesn't cause tendonitis. If anything, what people have noted who do it correctly, the way that I described, it seems to cure tendonitis. It seems to help, help it, not hurt it. So it's a matter of perspective and how you do it. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.